A lot of people are curious how we're gonna cool this hot box down this summer, especially when we're packing as much man meat as gravy. Answer simple. EcoFlow. So since I bought the Itty Bitty, I've been looking for something to cool it down. I'm a sweaty guy. I could never wear khakis to school because my butt crack would just have a, you know what I'm saying. And that's how I came across ugh, the EcoFlow Wave. The EcoFlow Wave offers a 1200 watt cooling performance with an inverter compressor, which is equipped with an advanced algorithm to help your cooling experience. I'm wearing khakis. Also, the EcoFlow Wave comes with a battery pack that is equipped to last eight hours. Pop that bad boy in there, and just like that, we're cooling the itty bitty down. I'm wearing khakis every video. One of my favorite parts about the battery pack is you can charge it four different ways. She takes the wall socket, power station, car socket, or you can also use the EcoFlow solar charging bundle. When it comes to maintenance, this thing's basically hands off. All the condensation that's made is transported to a heat tube and then it evaporates immediately. If you guys would like to check out an EcoFlow Wave, you can look in the description below. They're gonna be giving $50 off to each one of you guys that use my code AOWAVE. Sounds pretty cool. This will only last to June 13th, so be quick with it. Now it's time to dive into the itty bitty floor. Ladies and gentlemen, we are back at the itty bitty. You guys, you already know we have put in the first half of the floor. You come up here. Tim, the whole fiberglass shop is shut down on Sundays, but we came in this morning. We're gonna finish doing a little bit of the grunt work on the back of the floor. We're gonna go back through here, put in foam, fiberglass everything down. But before we do all that, we need to finish the back of the boat, get it prepped. By the end of today's video, the floor will be complete. Hey girl. We have three bulkheads running across the entire floor. You guys already know the deal. If you saw the last video, we need to cut, remove, grind, and have some fun. The only thing I'm really scared of, the last time Tim was here, he was able to kind of guide me so I wouldn't cut through the bottom of the boat. I really don't want to cut the hole, make any more extra work than we need to do. There you go. By the end of this, we're gonna be able to flip itty bitties like a NASCAR pit job. through the bottom if I use that. Power? Yeah. That has to be the strongest sawzall I've ever touched in my life. I just don't want to create any more unnecessary work. Tim already told me he had full body cramps. Blade just snapped in half. Look at all that plywood. The plywood is completely paper. Sturdy. There's always one that remains. I'm that one bulkhead in here. Are you? So tired of doing this stuff, dude. <laughs> this isn't a fun, fun. Let's go grind some fiberglass with the homies. Nobody says that. Except for Tim, because he's a man's man. I know I haven't known you too long. 
Right, I'll be shot back, but I like to get personal real quick. It's a dirty boy. Uh, I missed you. Now we're getting quality time with me and you. <laughs> I'm cramping. Just gotta keep picturing the itty bitty. Slaying in some water. I'm gonna be covered everywhere, dude. Starting to see why there's not that many boat projects on YouTube. You're covered in dust. Yeah. Yeah. Looking pale. Yeah. We need to touch a little bit of that dry wood on there. Then we need to hit it with the air dremel. We're just gonna rest the bulkheads in there for the day. Want Tim to come in here Monday. Jaw dropped. <laughs> oh! So glad Tim wasn't here for that. <laughs> Time to get to sucking. Vacuuming. Okay, I've discovered my biggest weakness in boat building is cutting patterns. I just don't have that talent. I always just cut them a little wacky. Never fits the right area. But what I've learned if you can't do it right, do it a little bit bigger than you want. You can always trim. It's a little bit tougher to go back and add to. Woo! It's almost too long for the cardboard. They're shaped so weird. Never been that guy who can just cut something out to the perfect shape. Always just kind of have to make something work. Without using that goo mixture, we would be screwed. See how she fits. I think that's pretty, pretty dang close. I failed art in high school and I tried so hard. Everybody has their weaknesses. It's not pretty. Good thing is we got goo. We can fix a lot of issues. We good to you? That was perfect. We finally made it to the part of the boat where we can reuse the same pattern. All the bulkheads to the back of the boat were different heights, different widths. They've all set in at 69, 10. fits really good one more oh I'm having Davy gravy withdrawals I haven't been around in a while <laughs> The last bulkhead. This feels better than graduating high school. I don't know how that feels, but I imagine it's good. Time? Oh, it's not. It blurred out. The itty bitty is finally coming along. I can't wait till the ground is actually ground and I'm not tripping in here because it's in the hundreds how many times I've tripped fallen. Good day's work. We will see you guys tomorrow. Oh. I never really thought we'd be at this point, Tim. It's a great feeling to have the bulkheads installed and the floor set in place. So. Were you able to use the bulkheads that I cut? Oh yeah, yeah, you did a great job cutting okay. them and getting them level and squared up and all I had to do was time in. So we got uh, the back end framed up here around the around the motor. Okay. And, uh, we've got all the boards set in place and screwed down and we're ready to 
start tying the floor, the edges of the floor to the hull. I was curious how the floor was going to feel with the height. Yeah, um, we're actually hitting the ceiling here, so <laughs> I didn't anticipate that, but that's what we've got. So. Yeah, I mean, we'll you win some, work. you lose some, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. I'm only going to live in here for like a year and a half, so. There you go. But uh, yeah, we'll uh, go ahead and seam the outside edge, and then we'll seam where the joints, where the boards come together. Okay. So if you're ready, we'll go ahead and get going. You're going to be the guy that wets it out for me? Yeah, right. I'll wet it out. So what you can do when you wet them out, just go ahead and you can start a stack. If, you know, if I'm get too far ahead of you. Okay. So what you're gonna do is wet out. You're trying to get rid of the white. That means that the resin is saturated into the fiberglass. We'll keep moving. You've got a limited amount of time to work with this resin because in this heat, it doesn't take long for it to catalyze and go off. So. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these three. That's gonna happen so much, man. Oh. Jeez. Did you swallow something? It got my eyeballs. Let's just say my eyeball was burning pretty bad. Would we just keep on working through that or go uh, wash it out? If it's burning bad, we'll go put water and just keep flushing water on it. So, is it burning right now? It's Pretty not good. terrible. I yeah. mean, it's it's burning now. Just keep blinking your eye. Okay. You want to go do it now? It's not that bad. I mean, usually it's bad for the first minute or so, and then it usually. It, will it blind me? No. Okay. It's more just like a pain tolerance yeah, thing. It's just I'm not gonna let a little resin in my pupil stop me. I just got a little ambitious and got it on the <laughs> camera lens. Yeah. Right. Sorry. Right. Occasionally, where the floor comes to the sidewall, there's a little bit of a void here and there, but it's no issue. Of the double layers of the woven roven with the chop strand mat will take care of that, so it's no issue at all. Basically, I'm just trying to eliminate as much of this drop off as we can. That's why I'm putting these at an angle. What I'll do Monday when this dries, I'll come in here with a, some lightweight filler and fill this and level it out and then when we come back and put our final piece of fiberglass, everything will be, you know, flat and uniform. Sounds good to me. When I'm doing this, should I just slop it on there? Like, yeah, you don't am I to going too slow? Yeah, you can pick your face up a little bit. I'm trying my best, man. I'm going to outwit you, Tim. You got a race going. Oh, gosh, uh -oh. Tim. Crap. No, I'm good. I might need you to stretch me out, but I'm fine. <laughs> oh. Put you on the disabled list. <laughs> no, yeah. don't do that. One thing me and Tim have discussed that we didn't really discuss in the previous video, and a lot of you were commenting on the drainage in the bulkheads. The thing that you have to realize was this boat was made imperfectly. This boat it was only made for a couple years. There's a lot of funky boats in the 70s were made and they had to stop production because it wasn't the best boat. Maybe it didn't sell that much. Could have just been that. But what we found with the current drainage system in the bulkheads, the actual shape of the hole was not allowing the water to drain all the way through the floor. It would pull up in multiple sections. There was three sections where the water would get hung up and really rot out everything around it. So in order to get this done as fast as possible and eliminate that water from pulling up in multiple different sections, we decided to take out every drainage hole there is and then we're gonna fill every area with foam. I've never said that many words without stumbling over them. That was a pretty big day for me, Tim. My calves are on fire. <laughs> they're on fire, huh? Yeah, they're burning good. I don't know why. I tell you what, honestly, sometimes when you're, you're in a confined space working with resin, yes, I really can't explain what it is, but the back side of your legs will tingle a little bit. It'll kind of give you a burning sensation. That's good to know. Let me ask you this. Sure. If you have resin on your skin <laughs> and it's burning the back of your leg, <laughs> Okay. Is that a, will it burn me no, like you no. just, okay, so it's just skin yeah, irritation. It's uncomfortable. Okay. 
I can hear you at home tonight. <laughs> but Andrew was tough. He was crying yeah, any, the entire day. Anytime you're about to ask a question, I have to go, hmm, what's coming now? <laughs> We're getting close. Okay. Most of this, because of the composite that this is made of, it's a lot easier to work the air pockets out of it with your hand than it would be with a brush. So whatever imperfections there are, I can come back when it dries and sand those down with the grinder, get them good and smooth, and then we'll be ready to lay our full, we'll be laying a full sheet of fiberglass over everything. We are now starting to put in foam. What we're gonna do before we put fiberglass down, we're gonna drill holes in every section of the bulkheads between the bulkheads. The boat gets shallow as you get closer to the edge because of the angle, so I'm gonna be careful not to drill too close to the sidewall. I don't wanna drill through the bottom of the boat. One thing that the boat did not originally have, no foam in the base of the boat. If you guys take a good look at the itty bitty, it's pretty narrow, not very wide to have that much height on a boat. We're thinking if we add a little extra weight to the base, as Davy Gravy says, it won't shake what daddy gave her nearly as much when we get it in the water. Should work out, fingers crossed. So with these holes, when we pour the foam in, will the foam come out of them? Yeah, it'll actually come. Well, what's gonna happen when you put the foam in there, it's gonna start expanding and it's gonna spread out throughout the hull. It's a two-part component. This is your A, this is your B. And we're gonna mix them 50-50 or one-to-one, -one, equal parts. Once you mix it, you've got a limited amount of time that it starts to expand so once uh, once we mix it and pour it's going to immediately start expanding so we might have to work pretty quick again okay okay a little less than half you know there's going to be some that's going to run outside of the hole and it's kind of messy there'll be enough that'll go in there and like i said as it starts expanding ultimately they'll come to the top of the hole and we know we got enough in that part. so we've already started with the a component this is the b we put about two inches, so we'll go two inches with this. And you can see the color. See how it changes color? Starts getting that yellow. Yeah, that's look. once you get that look, it's ready to go. Oh, it's probably split. wanna wanna clean your stick up because it's gonna start expanding on it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and pour some up here in the front. Like I said, I'm. It's gonna be a little messy in the beginning. See, it's already starting to expand. So that one is no good <laughs> it's gotten, gotten away from me so i think what we probably need to do is we'll just cut our ratio in half gotcha. uh, i think the two inches is going to be too much gotcha Look that looks crazy <laughs> and see that's what's going on in the hall on the underside so start stirring that's good all right i think she's about it Maybe I can get a little more accurate on my pour this time. I didn't do too good on the first round. Feels like a pop quiz in high school where you're rushing everything. Two plus four divided by two. This was a big risk taking this job, Tim. I appreciate you doing it. Oh yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed the work. I think we got enough. I mean, yeah. all the holes. Foam's risen out of. You know, it's probably going to take probably about another 30 minutes to fully for all the heat to escape out of it. Looks crazy. I feel a lot better about having this in here. Though. You know, some people don't like foam in their boat, but I think in the case of this boat, I think it's a, a very necessary addition. I'm happy, Tim. I'm too. Ready to get the heck out of this That's boat. start a weekend, huh? Yeah, that sounds good to me. Let's do it. All right, day three. We are about to have the floor finished. You've done a couple things since we've been gone. Yeah, yesterday. Uh, everything this is what we used friday to tie the, the edges of the floor down this is the woven roving attached to the chop strand mat so when they dried i came in yesterday and sanded off any burrs or you know air voids or anything that was sticking up we vacuumed it out then we came back and used some filler that we have to kind of level some places up this morning i came in here and we sanded this down prepped it cut our pieces of fiberglass this is just a one ounce chop strand mat <clears throat> we're going to put it down this morning and when we get all this down and wet out get all the air pockets out 
Will we get on our floor? Probably what I'll do either late this afternoon or tomorrow, I'll come in here and sand off any burrs that we may have, and then I'll come and paint some, some gel coat on the top like we did on the transom. Sweet. And then we'll be through with the stringers and floor. That'll be huge. Huge step, huge step. So what I'm gonna do is fold this back and wet the surface of the plywood first, and then fold this top strand mat back into it and start rolling it out. Then we'll just keep working our way to the back of the boat. Sounds good to me. Turn this fan on. Yeah. Out of here. I'm high as a kite already. Tim was soaking wet, but like he just hopped fresh out of a bathtub. That man was drenched. I was drenched after being in there for 10 minutes. The literal temperature of the boat with that catalyzer in there. I'm gonna Google it really fast. Catalyzer? <laughs> for those of you at home wondering how Tommy looks. <laughs> so the mixed temperature can reach 400 degrees. We could bend bacon bread in there, man. Poor Tim, that man is a walking saint. He has put up with so much, and he is definitely charged me appropriately. <clears throat> Honestly, I could not be more grateful to have a fiberglass shop let me come in here, treat it like my own. Huge shout out to EcoFlow. They pretty much paid for the entire fiberglassing of the boat, and they've also cooled me down when my body temp was a solid 115. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed today's video. Itty Bitty is another step closer to being waterbound.